Praise God. We record these messages and then we send them out throughout the whole world. This ministry is touching people all over the world. Praise God. And even here in the USA, I want to greet you all in Jesus' name. That song, a lot of you are inquiring about that song that I pray. And I'm starting to play, pr play it every Sunday. And I'm going to give you the story behind that song and why I love it so much. It's called Healing by Richard Smallwood and Vision. And you can find this on YouTube. And uh, I do not record it when we're on, on live here because it would be violation of their copyright. But you can go to YouTube and download Richard Smallwood and Vision. And this um, CD was made in Detroit, Michigan many years ago. And let me just tell you how this, this um, song came into my life. 20 years ago, when my first wife passed, and i um, so glad to see my son Wes on. He, he's my best friend, my best buddy. Uh, when your mom passed, I had uh, we buried her on a Saturday, and um, October 31st, and that was um, 1999. And then I had to go to work that Monday. I mean, my job told me, no, we need you. You have an assignment in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I had to drive from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. That's over 300 miles. I did not feel like it. I did not feel like it. I didn't. I was in grief. My heart was empty. My heart was burdened. I was in great pain. And so someone had given me um, this CD by Richard Smallwood. Yes, this CD is 20 years old, but it still means so much to me today. And so I remember driving up the Pennsylvania Turnpike and playing this song, Healing. I kept playing it back to back uh, for miles. And um, the song was ministering to my spirit. Jeep, it was ministering to me. Jackie Fisher, it was ministering to me. Dustina, it was ministering to me. I don't think I could, make, could have made it to Pittsburgh on that assignment without the Lord using that song to minister to me. But however, as I was playing this, uh, the whole CD, I did not realize I was speeding. I mean, I was hitting 90 miles per hour going up the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And so the police, the state police pulled me over and said, and, and the policeman looked at me and said, you all right? I said, no. He said, Tell me what's happening. So I told him, I'm in grief, man. I'm in grief, and I've got to go to work. I am in grief. He said, well, you pull over, and you pray, and you talk to the Lord, get the strength, and drive carefully. You drive slowly. He said, take your time. I want you to get there. At the rate you're going, you're going to be with, with Jesus in heaven before your time. He said, take your time. And so... I, and I believe that was an angel of the Lord, not a policeman. It was an angel of the Lord. And he ministered to me. And that just lightened my burden. And I was able to drive to Pittsburgh. And I played that song over and over again. But I was able to control my speed. And so this song, Healing, uh, it means a lot to me. And I, I just love to share it with you. Uh, I play it over and over and over again. And it just reminds me of the many people who are going through so much difficulty these days. Dustina reports that they've had uh, two heart attacks and deaths in their family in the past week. And so we're praying for mm -hmm. Dustina and her family. And, and each of you has something you can relate to where there is a, a need of healing. Some of you are going through sickness in your body. Well, we want to welcome you to the online church where the Lord ministers to us. And we take time to share with one another and to care for one another. Last week, we prayed for Tara, and we believe that her vision has improved. And we just thank God. God has healing for all of us, um, no matter who we are. I look back over those last 20 years, and there were times I did not know how I would make it. Uh, through those difficult, dark years in my life. But God has brought me to this place, and eight years ago brought me to uh, the Atlanta area and, uh, and 
uh, Jackie and I were united in marriage, and, and she's such a blessing to me and to this ministry and to the whole world. And so there is hope, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there are dark days, but the Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so uh, part of my ministry is to share people about the hope in Christ Jesus. Yes, it might look dark now. The storms are raging, and, and troubles are at every hand, and, and challenges and issues are knocking at your door. But as we learn how to put our trust in the Lord, and there are times when the Lord will send an angel, and he'll tell you, Jeep, slow down. He'll say, uh, Jackie Fisher, slow down. Ryan Trugler, slow down. Ryan might be zooming down the turnpike. Ryan knows that turnpike that I was driving on, and they would have given me a fine if I had made it to Pittsburgh because I'd have got there too much in, in in too less time in less time that it would take for me to uh, traverse that turnpike uh, no, under normal speeds. But God will send an angel, and, and that angel will de- redirect you. And sometimes it's, it's through the Word of God, it's through ministries like this, it's through the online church, it's through the brick-and-mortar brick church. God will have someone even a knock on your door, or even the policeman who pulls you over and, and says, hey, you're driving too fast, I'm going to give you a warning, slow down. And so God loves you and he cares about you. And that sickness that you're facing, it won't last forever. God is the healer. That difficulty you're going through, it won't last forever. Those dark uh, days you're seeing, they won't last forever. I'm a witness, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a witness of the love of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and his ability to keep us. And I'm also a witness of the power when two or more of us get together. When two of us get together in the name of Jesus, there's power The Holy Spirit is in the midst of us. And so each Sunday morning, I look forward to seeing you on the online church. And I look forward to hearing your testimonies, hearing your voices. And even if we don't get to talk or chat on Sunday mornings, the fact that you're here lets me know that God is blessing you and me in a mighty way. And so we thank God. We praise God. We bless God. Last week I heard about a friend of ours here in Atlanta who had suffered a heart attack and a stroke both in the same week. Mm -hmm. And so I was able, praise God, Jackie and I have been praying for her, and I was able to talk with her on the phone this morning. She says she's doing well. Praise God. We believe God for the total healing. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what the situation is, you trust in the Lord, and God will give you the healing. God will give you the healing. You just trust in the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, and see what God will do. It is no secret what he will do. He doesn't have favorites. He loves you. He loves each and every one of us. And so once again, welcome to the online church. I want to ask my son, Wes, uh, uh, to comment on and and, and lead us in prayer. Would you do that that for us, Wes? Lead us in prayer this morning. Hey Amen. We um, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today and giving us this opportunity to worship you together, whether we are far or near, or, but we're connected, Lord, and we believe that you will bless us today and give us the strength we need and refill our tanks with your spirit, Lord, and we ask you to lead our pastor today in the word, and we're just so appreciative of all the blessings that you bestowed upon us. Bless our families, wherever they may be. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thanks, Wes. Thank God for you. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, Wes has two new books out. He's following in his dad's footsteps. Well, no, he's walking in his own footsteps. He always did walk in his own footsteps. But God has blessed him to write two books. Wes is a high school teacher, and he, in his first book, he's written about his experiences as a high school teacher in Chester, Pennsylvania. He doesn't mention Chester, Pennsylvania in his book, but he talks about the difficulties of teaching this new generation. And uh, you can get a copy of his book, um, and uh, I can send you out some information later on. Then his next book just came out a couple weeks ago, 
and uh, he talks about how how God delivered him from uh, that cannabis plant, and 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 how his life has changed, and 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 what marvelous things are happening in his life, and so uh, he's a writer, and he's got a style that's down to earth. I mean, people can relate to his style of writing. He's a very highly intelligent guy, a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, where he played football there was a wide receiver, but God blessed him uh, with a good brain and a good mind, and now he's teaching others, and I'm really proud of him. So he's got two books available. They're available on Amazon. Check out Wesley Carter on Amazon and um, get his books, and we thank you, Wes, and I'm still waiting on my copy of your newest book. Um, Praise God. So we thank God. Okay, okay, uh, we give a shout out to you, Jackie Fisher, we give a shout out to you, Dustina, we give a shout out to uh, 302-287-3032, and Jeep, and to all the people, we give a shout out to our friends in Kenya and in parts of Africa, yes, Kenya, we have not forgotten you, we're going to be sending, we're going to be sending a check to Kenya, uh, the 1st of June, we're going to send a check to Kenya, and in that check, there'll be enough money for, for you, Elijah Bishop, to start building the new church. Um, uh, we've got enough. We've got enough. God has sent enough that we can build that building. We're going to scale it down from our original plans and build that building uh, so that the people in western Kenya can get out of the rain and out of the wind and from under the canopy of the, of the weather and you'll have your own place of worship and where you can use that place uh, to, to start taking food to the hungry in that area and teaching pastors in that area, having classes, worship experiences, and workshops. So we're very proud of what you're doing, uh, Bishop Elijah in Kenya. And I want to thank all of our, our members of the, of the online church and others who have sent gifts to our GoFundMe uh, plan and also who have sent gifts directly to this ministry so that we can build, help the Kenyans to build the church. We've got enough now uh, that we can build a very wonderful building uh, and they can have a place where they can worship. And that's going to be a witness to the glory and honor of God. And so we thank God. I thank God for each and every one of you who have been a part of this great effort to provide the Kenyans with their own place of worship in an area of western Kenya where is there is no brick and mortar church, no visible church. And um, I've been there several times. Jackie and I were there two years ago. We're going there next year uh, to, to dedicate this church building and to minister to the people of Kenya. So we thank God. We praise God. And if any of you want to go along with us to Kenya, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. We can take a group of people there and you can see what the Lord is doing in that great area uh, on that great continent. Okay, praise God. We're going to get into some word. We're going to get into some word. The Lord has given me uh, to continue today with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And as, as we pre- prepare to teach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and let me just say this. There are so many Christians who are afraid of the Holy Spirit. There are many Christians who are afraid of being taught about the Holy Spirit. There are many Christians who do not study about the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they've been goofed up by false teachings. And the church has so many opinions about the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is, or who he is, and why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. And so, and and because, and I find this in my many years of ministry, I find this to be true, there are denominations that don't even teach about the Holy Spirit. And so, I mean, how can you start reading the book of Acts? How can you understand the book of Acts without having a knowledge of the presence and person of the Holy Spirit? How can you read uh, Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews without 
having a knowledge of the Holy Spirit. And so the church today has gotten so picky and so confused, and yet it's not the pickiness, it's not the confusion that I think bothers God's heart. It's the proud spirit, the pride and the arrogance among Christians who don't want to learn about this. Don't teach about this, Pastor. I don't want to hear this. I don't believe this. And the many Christians who do not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you mix pride and unbelief in the church, you've got a goofed up church. And so the Lord said, teach it. And, and so all this year, we're going back to basics. We're teaching basic foundational truths about Christianity, about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit. And we've been laying a, a foundation since January, not going deep, but just laying out what the Bible says. And that's what I do. I lay out what the Bible says, hoping that people will listen, will pay heed, and will receive. And as we build upon this precept upon precept, we can grow, help grow strong Christians. Well, the Holy Spirit is the grower. We can help nurture strong Christians who will be able to stand, Terry, when the troublous times come. Who can be able to stand, Wes, when, when you've got to travel all across the state with a heart full of grief and pain and, 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 and not being able, to get, being able to get rid of the pain. We, as we study the Word of God and show people that it can be done and how it can be done and that Jesus cares, then we can help grow a church we can get America back up, up on her feet. We can, and that's the only way it's going to, we're going to help make America great again. Get America on her feet spiritually and, and, and bring America to the place where we all repent. Not only America, but the nations of the world. And so, and so uh, you know, it, it does trouble my heart when people don't want to hear about the Holy Spirit. They want to, don't want to hear about the gifts of the Spirit. They don't want to hear about living righteously. But yet, people are so willing to accept anything coming out of the political realm, anything coming from their party, whether they're Republican or Democrat, anything that's spewed out of the Republican or, or Democratic platform, people buy it, they run with it, and they make that their gospel. But we preach Christ Jesus, crucified, buried, and resurrected. And so we thank God. Dustina says we need to make the church great again. Yes, yes, the church has lost its calling. The church has lost its sense of direction, Dustina. But we can help make the church great again. How? By one by one, brick by brick, door by door evangelism. And, and reaching out to our neighbors one by one. But first, we've got to lock Jesus into our hearts. And then we have got to individually study the Word of God. Study the Word of God and believe every word of God. The Bible says every word of God is pure. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. We should not pick and choose what we want to hear. I know people, they flip from one preacher to another until they find something that's going to sound good to their ears. I, that, that's sad. That's sad. Because there are a lot of folks out there blowing pipes. They're just noisemakers. They're tinkling cymbals. They're soothers. They're stroking you. But the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And God has given us a prescription for living, and it starts with Jesus. Let's turn. Turn with us now to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, five verses. We're going to ask Jackie Fisher. This is Jackie Fisher from Kentucky. If she would read Acts chapter 1. Verses 4 through 8. We want you to follow along with the word, and then we're going to hear a message that will bless you. 
Good morning, Church, and good oh. morning, Pastor oh, Carter. Hello. Everyone is doing well and blessed today by the Lord. Uh, I'll be reading Acts 4 through 8. Push. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, thou at this time, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. And that was chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Did you want me to continue or stop here? That is fine right there, Jackie. That is fine right there. And I appreciate you very much. And uh, thank God for you, and we praise God for the word that you have read. Uh, Miss Jackie Fisher, Mrs. Jackie Fisher just read um, Acts chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. And um, that sixth verse, I just uh, wrote a little note while she was writing that, reading that verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel and that's what people are asking in America they're not asking the Lord they're asking politicians how can we make America great again and the Israelites are asking the disciples are asking the Lord in Acts and Jesus visualized Jesus on the mountain he's about to ascend into heaven He's about to ascend. He's on Mount Moriah, about to ascend into heaven. And they say, well, Lord, when will you make Israel great again? Will you make Israel great again? And Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the times of the seasons, which the Father had put in his own power. And, and we've got people saying, make America great again. Make America great again. Dustina wrote in the chat window, no, no, make the church great again. And, and we want to take off on what Dustina says, make the church great again. When you make the church great again, you make America great. I'm not going to add the again part. I think we ought to make America great. I think we ought to make America the greatest nation in the whole world. And the only way it can be done is by trusting in Jesus. Not in the politicians. It scares me, ladies and gentlemen, the way so many evangelicals are labeling Republicans as Christians and Democrats as the devils. That is divisive. It's a divisive spirit. For every Republican is not a Christian. Every Democrat is not a devil. And, 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 and I pray that we will stop trying to equate Christianity with the Republican Party. We can't even equate Christianity with being an American. There was a time when people could say America is a Christian nation. But when you look at the statistics, Dustina, a very small percentage of Americans are Christians. Well, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying this, we've got hundreds of thousands, millions of people who attend church. But being a church attender, attender does not make you a believer. We've got a whole lot of people going to church and claiming to be Christians. But ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again. Why are people fighting against the word of God? 
Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you, Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you cannot even, cannot even see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again, America, you'll never be great. Unless you're born again, churchgoers, you cannot be great. And so we go back to basics. We're teaching basics. I know some of you might get tired of the basics, but I'm going to teach the basics until the Lord says, don't teach it anymore. And, and, and hopefully people will hear and believe and receive. Because the scripture says, for as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You want to make America great again? Encourage people to receive Jesus. Then Jesus will give America the power to become like sons of God. Not only America, he'll do the same in your nation and in every nation. And so, so we want to talk about the Holy Spirit today, ladies and gentlemen. How to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The subject is how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But most of the time I'm going to talk is about what the Holy Spirit is and what he does and why we need the Holy Spirit. And we're going to try to keep it simple, plain, and simple. Okay? Uh, uh, everybody needs an anointing. And, and so when Jesus uh, answered that question about restoring the kingdom to Israel or making Israel great again, he says in that eighth verse that Jackie read, but you shall receive power. The key, ladies and gentlemen, to making America great again, to making your household great again, to making you great again, the devil beat you down. Uh, some of you are still down. The devil beat me down. Uh, uh, the devil beat this nation down. The devil's beating nations down. But we don't have to stay down. The key, ladies and gentlemen, is that we can be restored. Ezekiel in that 37th chapter talks about the valley of dry bones. God asked Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel said, thou know, Lord. Thou knowest, Lord. You know, Lord. Yes. And, and there are people out there, you've, your dreams have been shattered. Uh, you dropped out of school or you lost a job or you lost a loved one. Your marriage didn't work out. Your kids are acting goofy. And it looks like everything's caving in on you. Now the, the, the doctor's saying your health is not good. But it's not all over, ladies and gentlemen. It is not over. This, these are just indications that there's time for a change. And the change will come when we put our trust in God and receive what he has for us. And Jesus gives us the key, the whole key, not just for evangelizing the world. Listen to this. Jesus gives us the key, not just for evangelizing the whole world, but evangelizing your household, for getting you back on top, for getting you back uh, to restoration. He gives us the key in this eighth verse of Acts chapter 1. He says, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Jesus said, you shall be witnesses unto me. But he said, first, you must receive the power, and you can receive the power after the Holy Spirit has come. And so Jesus told them to tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the promise. He gave them a promise. He, he called these disciples to a work. He called them to go into all the world to preach the gospel, to preach about God's love for them and that Jesus died on the cross and that they can be saved and, and, and born again and their lives can change. But before they could go and teach anybody, Jesus told them, tarry, wait in Jerusalem for the power. And ladies and gentlemen, if the church would just pay heed to this command of the Lord, and when I say church, if you and I would just pay heed to the command of the Lord, yes, God has a calling on your life. He's got a calling on my life. I would love to see Back to Basics online church reaching a multitude of nations. I'd love to see uh, a, a, a light go on 
on, on, a, on a global map where uh, uh, people from different nations of the world are on with us at the same time and this gospel is touching nations, boom, 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 at the same time. That's, it's going to happen, but uh, uh, we've got to take it step by step. Jesus said, wait for the promise. Tarry in Jerusalem. And so many of you have a calling on your life, and you wonder, well, ain't nothing happening. I, uh, nothing happening in my ministry, and and uh, seem like I'm so ineffective. But learn how to wait on the Lord. Paul had to wait 14 years, ladies and gentlemen, before he began preaching. Paul was saved on the Damascus Road, and uh, Ananias took him into uh, Syria. And Paul uh, studied under Ananias. Ananias was his pastor. And Paul had to wait 14 years before he was released to go to do ministry. Then in Acts chapter 13, we see the Holy Spirit saying to the five elders of the church in Corinth, in Antioch, in Antioch, set apart Paul and Barnabas for the work I have for them. And so Paul had to wait, ladies and gentlemen, and while he's waiting, he was not eating popcorn and watching DVDs. Uh, he was not fishing and trying to uh, uh, catch crappies. He was studying the, the, the manuscript, studying the Word of God, studying the law of the prop, uh, and the prophets. He was praying. He was seeking God. He was developing his personal relationship with the Lord. And that's where the church is missing the point today. There are people... They do not want to take the time to develop a personal relationship with the Lord. And so instead, here's what we have. We have this smorgasbord type of Christianity where people go to church on Sunday for one hour, and they will pick and choose as they look over the order of worship what they're going to listen to, what they're not going to listen to, that which they don't want to listen to. They look on their cell phones. They start texting somebody or seeing what somebody else is doing, and their heart is not into Jesus Christ. God doesn't have their attention. And then they go home. They don't have a prayer life. They don't sanctify themselves. They don't have a quiet time before the Lord. And, and, and then they surround themselves with family members who are unbelievers or friends who don't uh, love Jesus. And, and, then, and then you wonder, Dustina, why the church is so dead. But we can make the church great again by individually seeking the Lord with our whole heart and, 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 and getting to the point where nothing matters but Jesus Christ. Nothing matters but Jesus Christ. Nothing matters but Jesus Christ. Richard Smallwood said there is a healing. There is a healing. There's a healing, and, and he said that song, he said the Lord gave him that song at a very critical, crucial time in his life where he needed the touch of the Lord. And so now he shares that song with others, and, and, and those of us who have been touched by the Lord, we share our testimony. But Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem. He says, you shall receive power. And church, stop running from this verse. You shall receive power. And stop trying to make it on your own. So many people are trying to make it on their own. They're trying to do their ministry on their own based on their own ideas or what their bishop says or what their denomination believes. Ladies and gentlemen, there are times we, we've got to say goodbye to the denomination. You've got to send the bishop a, a thank you card and, and kiss him off. And say, look, you taught me for a while, but there are some things God wants me to learn, and you all aren't teaching it, and I've got to go forward with the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to get to a place where you say, only God can satisfy my hunger, and, and he says he will satisfy my hunger when the Holy Ghost has come upon me. And so since God has said, Jackie Fisher, since God has said he will satisfy our hunger, he will heal, he will deliver he will meet every need, he will supply every need, then it makes sense that we seek God to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It makes sense. 
I pray for the day when preachers stop preaching against the Holy Spirit and wake up and get the Holy Ghost for themselves. But the sad thing is, I pray that the eyes of the people will be enlightened, that God will give to the church, the people, a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of our calling, what are the exceeding what is the exceeding greatness of his riches, riches in the saints? Open our eyes, Lord. Help us to repent, God, from running from you and trying to do things our own way. Forgive us, Father, for creating our own gospel messages. Forgive us for not obeying your word. Forgive us for adding on to your word or redacting or editing your word. Forgive us for trying to make your word fit into our boxes, our containers. And Lord, help us to surrender to you and to your word and to your will. Most of all, God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. And then reveal to us who the Holy Spirit is, what his job is. Reveal to us who you are, God. Reveal to us, Lord Jesus. And then reveal to us how we as members of the body of Christ can serve you to the glory of your name, not for our own purposes, but for the glory of your name. And so this eighth verse of, of Acts chapter 1 is so powerful. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And a good place to be a witness for Jesus is right at home, right where you are, right in your school, right on your job, right on the ballpark where your kids are playing, right at the uh, stove where you're, you're making dinner, right where you are, where, no matter what's happening, ask God to fill you now with the Holy Spirit. You see, God has already given to every believer the Holy Spirit. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make this thing plain and simple. The church receives the Holy Spirit the moment a person accepts Jesus Christ as Lord. Listen, the moment you confess Jesus as Lord, you ask him to come into your heart and be your Savior and Lord. The Holy Spirit, the second person of the Trinity, God the Holy Spirit, takes you and baptizes you into the church. In other words, he adds you to the church. The moment you are born again, you are added to the real church. I'm not talking about First Baptist or Third Presbyterian or Second Pentecostal or that uh, building down on the corner. No, God does not add you to that. I mean, you can do that yourself. You can go down there, walk down the aisle on a Sunday, shake your preacher's hand, pick up your package of offering envelopes, and go home, and, and, and they make you believe that you're born again. You're saved because you join the church. The church is not a club, ladies and gentlemen. It's not, it is not a social uh, uh, club or organization. The church is the body of born-again believers. The only way you get into the church is through Jesus Christ. You must be born again. And you're born again when you confess your sins and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe in your heart that he's the Son of God. He was, he was crucified, raised again from the dead. And, and you invite him into your life and receive him by faith. That's what it means to be born again. You don't join any organization. You don't try to impress people. You receive Jesus by faith by doing what Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And then, and then, ladies and gentlemen, you shut out of your mind what people think. You stop trying to impress those people who meet in this building or those people who meet there because they've got their own standards and their own method. No, you develop a personal relationship with God based on what this book says.
based on what Jackie Fisher read from today. You build your relationship with God based on what the book says, not what people say or think, not even what grandmama said, not even what mama said, because grandmama and mama were often in error. This book is a book that will lead people to glory, to eternal life. And so the Bible teaches us. John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus baptizing in the Jordan, uh, 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 I'm, not even, I'm not even worthy of tying his shoes. He, he baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And, and John baptized Jesus because Jesus wanted to identify with sinful man. And Jesus said, John, baptize me. John said, Jesus, you're without sin. Baptize me, John. Just do it. So Jesus could identify with a sinful man. And when Jesus was baptized in the water, when he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven in the form of a dove, a bird, and lit on Jesus' shoulder. And a voice spoke from heaven. God the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And God commanded the world, hear what Jesus has to say. And then Jesus went forth, and, and uh, three years later he gave his life on Calvary. He died on the cross to take away your sins and mine. Every sin we've ever committed, every sin we will ever commit has been paid for by Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, if we will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And so when we are saved, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the church. And then the Holy Spirit enters into us to live in us. He lives in our spirit. He lives to teach our spirit how to obey God. But then the Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, ladies and gentlemen, basics. The basic is this. When you receive Jesus, you receive the Holy Ghost. Now, all you preachers out there preaching against the Holy Ghost, you need to just shut up and read the Word of God and stop deceiving people. The Lord rebuilt you. Teach the Word of God. When people receive Jesus as Savior, they receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to live in them. The Scripture teaches us that uh, if we do not have the Spirit of God, we are not His. That's in Scripture. We don't belong to Him if we don't have the Spirit of God. But if you've been born again, you have the Spirit of God. So thank God for that. Then the next step is, Paul writes this, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine in which is excess. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul saw the Corinthian church. He saw the Ephesian church. He saw how they would have their communion meals and they would uh, eat a whole full supper at the church and, and get uh, they would stuff themselves like gluttons. And then they would drink a whole lot of wine. And then all kinds of stuff would come out of their mouths and all kinds of behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul wrote, wine makes you act crazy. Wine makes your spirit do strange things. Wine is a mocker. And he said, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. But we've got Christians, we've got pastors, we've got denominations. They want you to drink. we got cardinals and bishops. They will pour, pour the liquor into you. We've got pastors who can't have a meal without a drink. Ladies and gentlemen, so the church is all messed up because these leaders have added on to the Word of God their own interpretation and their own lifestyle. And that's unless you have all of these 262 denominations in America where they're contending with another and hardly any are teaching the true Word of God. So let's get back to the Word of God. The Word of God says when you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, man, God's called you to ministry. 
He wants you to do this, wants you to do that, wants you to build a church in Kenya, wants you to have an online church, wants you to have an, a Bible study, wants you to go out street preaching, wants you doing this, then be filled with the Spirit. And when you're filled with the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, the Spirit guides you. The Spirit keeps you. So your body gets sick. The Spirit heals you. People talk about you. The Spirit teaches you how to love them. You get laid off from your job. The Spirit maintains you and your family. Make sure you're eating. Make sure your bills are paid until you get another job. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, do not neglect the filling of the Holy Spirit because that's the only way the church can be great again. That's the only way America can be great again. Not to be filled with Democratic or Republican rhetoric, because most of it is lies, and they spin the lie, they spin the lie, they spin the lie, they spin the lie. But spin the Holy Spirit, spin the Word of God, spin the Word of God, stand on the Word of God. America can be a great nation if we will trust the Word of God and trust Jesus. Uh, every nation can be a great nation if they trust in the Lord. And be filled with the Spirit of God. Ladies and gentlemen, every believer, remember this, every born-again believer has the Holy Spirit inside of you. That's why you desire to go to church. That's why you desire to study the Word of God. That's why you desire to pray. That's why you desire to fellowship with God. Because the Holy Spirit is now in you to direct you to God, to draw you unto God. But God wants you not just to have his Spirit in him, but to yield every part of your body. Yield your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your lifestyle. Yield every part of you to the Holy Spirit. That's when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Fill me. Fill my mind that I'll think your thoughts. Well, if you ask God to fill your mind, that means you're going to spend more time reading the Word of God because the Word of God is the mind of God. Fill me with your power. And then you'll find, ladies and gentlemen, that even though life is becoming more and more difficult, that it becomes sweeter and sweeter when you know that the Spirit of God lives inside of you. So we're going to just give you a few uh, uh bullets today on how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, keeping in mind that because you have confessed Jesus as your Lord, the Spirit of God lives in you, and you can only have the Spirit of God when you, when you confess Jesus as Lord and receive Jesus. You can't get the Holy Ghost by joining the church. You can't even get the Holy Spirit by going to church or hanging out with Christians. You must be born again by inviting Jesus into your life and confessing him to be your Lord and Savior. I'm trying to make this plain and simple, praise God. And uh, to get baptized in the Holy Spirit, just quiet yourself down. Prepare your heart. If you know there's known sin in your heart, repent of it. Tell God you're sorry for it. Ask God to forgive you and deliver you from it and just walk away from it. No matter what that sin is, just walk away from it, leave it, and then and then ask God. Ask God. You get the filling of the Holy Spirit by asking God. Just as you receive the Holy Spirit when you are born again, now we're talking about being filled. It's the difference between having a half of a cup and a whole cup. You want your cup running over. I'm holding up my teacup. You you want your cup to run over. Well, you want your your soul, your body, your very being to overflow with the Holy Spirit so that he will guide you. He will show you the way. He will keep you in excellent health. He will meet every need. He will fight every battle that you have. So prepare your heart. Confess your sins. Repent of your sins. Then ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. He will do that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are some people, when they get baptized in the Holy Spirit, 
they will get gifts right away from the Holy Spirit. Others, the gifts may come gradually. And ladies and gentlemen, some will get the gift of prophecy. Some will get the gift of healing or the gift of laying hands on the saints. These gifts come after you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Even the gift of tongues that people fight about in their ignorance. They fight about because they don't know anything about tongues and they won't read the word. The gift of tongues has a purpose. It's your prayer language, your heavenly prayer language. That when you 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 exalt your exhaust your prayers and don't know what to say in English or in Spanish or whatever your tongue is, that then you begin speaking in, in an unknown tongue, and and that's between you and God, and only God knows what you're saying, and and it, it's edifying and it builds you up and just releases you from oppression. But everybody doesn't speak in tongues, and the Bible teaches us everybody does not receive the gift of tongues. Just like everybody does not receive the gift of prophecy. Everybody does not get the, receive the gift of healings. But whatever gifts God gives you, thank him for it. But first of all, ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Then thank him for the Holy Spirit. And then worship God. Because once you're filled, you can worship God. People will know you're a Christian by the way you live. You won't have to get on a platform and get a mic and stand in the center of town and start preaching. No, they will know by the way you walk, by the way you glow, by the way you conduct yourself on your job. You'll start showing up on your job on time instead of late all the time. I mean, changes will come when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So do that. And if you should get a prayer language, cultivate it. Between you and God, speak to God in your unknown language. He'll give you interpretation. But if you don't get that language, don't get bent out of shape. Because the scripture says all do not speak with tongues. All do not prophesy. All do not lay hands on the sick. But whatever God gives you, receive it and thank him. And go forth, ladies and gentlemen. Go forth where he's called you. And don't try to be like anybody else. I know so many people, some, and in our school of ministry, I know I talk to a lot of people, especially some of the young men. They all want to be little Paul Begley's. I don't want to be Paul Begley. I want to be Leroy Carter. Uh, I want to see Jackie Fisher be Jackie Fisher. I want to see Terry Chiquito be Cherry, Terry Chiquito. I want to see Ryan Trogler be Ryan Trogler. I want to see Wes be Wes. Be the best Wes you can be. Be the best Joaquina you can be. Be the best Dustina. Be the best Nathan you can be. Let God take you to where he has you by way of the Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you for this word today. Thank you, Father, that there's a healing. There's a bomb in Gilead. We present our sicknesses, our, our, our pains to you. We present our doubt and unbelief to you. Forgive us, Father, for doubt and unbelief. Forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. Lord, we present the church to you that you uh, do with us whatever you please to do, what pleases you, and help us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain. Lord, bless those who are bereaved, those who are facing sickness, those who are looking for answers. Meet every need, Lord God. We put our trust in you. Fill us with your spirit, God. Fill us day after day, again and again and again. Yes, God, daily fill us with your Holy Spirit that your spirit will guide us into all truth. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise God, praise God. We're going to stop our recording. And uh, this is a basic teaching, ladies and gentlemen. We try to keep it plain and, and, and so that everyone can understand, I don't want to get deep because I can't get deep. I, don't, I wouldn't know how to get deep, ladies and gentlemen, but I believe this word of God. And I believe that you got two things out of this message, that the Holy Spirit lives in every believer. And number two, God wants you to be filled with the Spirit. Now that the Spirit lives in you, let the Spirit fill you. And only the Spirit can fill you when you ask him. When you ask him to fill you, just like when I made this cup of tea this morning, I put in a tea bag 
and a couple spoons full of sugar. Yes, I use sugar. And I put water in. And if I had put a half of uh, a cup of water, I'd had a half of a container of tea. But I filled it to the brim and put the top on it. Okay? And God wants to fill us to the brim every day. Every day. Because look at those dry bones in the valley. God said, Son of man, to Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel said, God, they're awfully dry and parched and dried out and the sun's baked them for so long, but you know, Lord. In other words, Ezekiel said, yes, Lord, you know. You know these dry bones can live. And, 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 the, and the Lord is looking at the church saying, son of man, daughter of man, can this church live? Can this church be great again? Well, Lord, you got a whole lot of denominations, a whole lot of stuff, a lot of madness, a lot of confusion. Uh, they're more into money, raising money, and, and building great ministries than they are in pre pre presenting Jesus Christ. But can they live? Yes, Lord, they can live. Then, then Son of Man, prophesy to the church. Prophesy to these bones. In other words, speak the word of God, Wes, to the church. Speak the word of God. Oh, friends, to your family. Speak the word of God to the people who are sick. Speak the word of God to the people around you who are confused. And when Satan comes upon you to confuse you, speak the word of God to Satan. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let the Spirit of God fill you. And he will raise up a standard against the devil every time the devil comes against you. We're talking about living the spirit-filled life, ladies and gentlemen. It's powerful. It's powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Praise God. Lift up your hands where you are and just praise God. We're going to end our recording. Just lift up your hands. I know you may not be a hand.